What's up guys? So in this video, it's time to show you guys all the bits and bobs that go into building a Sierra 300L big wheel. So right here you can see Alex is pointing out all the parts that we have laid out for the kit. There is a handful of parts in this kit. It can be a little bit overwhelming, which is exactly why we were making this video. So we're gonna get this thing squared away for you. So it goes a little bit faster and uh, makes your life a little easier when you're installing your kit. So starting right here, he's getting the front end disassembled. He's got the fender removed. He's uh, moving in and taking the wheel off. Just taking his time, getting that axle slid out. He's gonna get everything set to the side. He's gonna move along getting the headlight removed. Next is the uh, turn signals, the uh, reflectors, all the other bits and bobs. He's getting the uh, speedometer removed right here. So now he's just taking out the handlebar clamps. He's gonna get the handlebars pulled off to the side. He's putting some tape on the speedometer right here. He does not wanna get that thing scratched up. So here he is uh, removing the top triple tree. So you can you kind of see how there's a bunch of wires. He's just kind of hanging everything off to the side for now, just to make it a little bit easier. So now he's removing the retaining nut on the upper steering stem bearing. He's going to get the steering stem and the lower triple clamp slid out of the frame. So now you got to remove that key. Now the bolts, they are actually like a safety bolt. So they're actually partially stripped. So you can do it. You can do this two ways. You can just take an Allen key and actually just tap it into the bolt, which is what he chose to do. I personally like to use a Torx bit, but either way will work. Impact on there, just to remove the bolt. It comes out super easy. It's a lot easier to do that than using a ratchet. And again, it will be stuck to the end of your Allen key because it is one of those safety bolts that's partially stripped. They are designed to not come out. And we have to, uh, we obviously have to remove them so we can put your key switch on your new triple clamp. All right, onto the uh, onto the back end. So this bike did not have a master link, so Alex already knew. Grind the grind the pin off, get the uh, get the chain split, and pull the chain out of the bike. So now he's gonna go in the back. He's gonna pull off the mud flap just to get that out of the way. Now he's moving on to the brake line. He's getting everything set so we can get this swing arm completely removed from the bike. So now he's pulling out the. Uh, rear axle so at first he's going to take the nut off he's going to slide it out he's going to take the whole wheel assembly he's actually just going to slide that right out of the bike very carefully make sure when it's on your stand the bike is stabilized so this uh this sensor ring right here is going to get reused on your new rear hub um, we are not going to be reusing the sprocket we actually uh, upgrade you guys to a sierra 450r sprocket and brake assembly however we do reuse the disc sensor so now the swing arm is pulled out of the bike He's, uh, he's moving back to the front end. Alex likes to bounce around. He's got the stem popped out. And guys, when you buy a kit, we will do this for you. We will press your steering stem. You just gotta send us your triple clamp, but you can see how he's doing it in this clip. So this is just a standard 20 ton press. So there he goes, he's pressing it back onto the stem. So now it's time to put the bearing on. So you're gonna see when he puts the bearing on the triple clamp, He's gonna actually spin that lower seal and make sure he's not putting too much pressure because the second that thing stops spinning, he knows the bearing is all the way down. He does not wanna continue pressing because he will destroy the bearing if you do that. So this is the headlight bracket. So we have a couple of spacers with some longer hardware. So you're gonna bolt that back to your triple clamp. So now you're gonna install your key switch in the same uh, orientation as OEM, but you're gonna put brand new bolts on it. They're a 10 millimeter hex head. All right, time to uh, put the triple clamp back in. Just make sure before you do that, you put some grease on the bearing. We are not videoing every single step on this, so I will try to fill in the blanks as we go. Mounting the speedometer and all the, all the wires and everything back to the triple clamp so it's not just hanging on the bike. So right here you can see he's inserting the uh, pinch bolts, getting those ready. Now he's sliding the fork up. Upward pressure with some firm twisting will actually uh, get it in a little bit easier and faster. You can torque your lower pinch bolts and uh, leave your top bolts loose until you actually torque your top nut. Now you want to make sure the preload is set on your stem bearing before you move much farther. So 
definitely double check that before you go too much farther in the video. If you have any questions about that process, we do have other videos I can link you to on how to set your torque on your steering stem. So right here, we are installing our anti-vibe handlebar clamps. This is an upgrade for, your, for the kits. So your bars are now gonna have a CRF 450 style handlebar clamps with the uh, rubber dampeners. It's gonna feel a lot better when you're riding. He's just snugging them up for now. We're gonna go back and adjust the controls later when you're actually sitting on the bike and you have it on the ground. See, he's just snugging it up again just to make sure nothing moves. All right, guys, let's get that disc off the front hub here. So Alex is gonna get the rotor adapter all set to go. He's putting it onto the front hub that we supply. Loctite, Loctite, Loctite. I can repeat it in every video, but guys, please Loctite all your hardware. The Loctite is there to help you. So you guys can see he whipped them in with an impact and he's going back with an Allen key and he's just torquing them again to make sure it's good. All right, guys, so he's gonna install the brake disc. We've got the uh, sensor ring all reinstalled on there. He's gonna snug all that down. Now, if you previously ordered a kit and you did not re receive a replacement sensor ring, hit me up, shoot me an email. We have a uh, updated version of that for you guys. All right, front wheel's going on. He's gonna get the lug nuts torqued up here. So you can see he's just going around offset and then a circular pattern. There, the wheel's pretty much set to go. So he's setting up the, uh, the sensor on there. He's gonna get the caliper kind of just hung to the side for now. Um, he's also going to be throwing on the fork guard because it is a little bit of a challenge to get that on. Here he goes, putting on the fork guard. See him snugging up that bolt. You would not be able to get to that very easily if the wheel was already installed. So just try to remember that. We're trying to do this video in the correct steps for you guys just to make this easier. So you can see he already installed his uh, wheel spacers. So he's gonna get this thing lined up. He's using the jack to his advantage. So he has the bike sitting where it needs to sit. So you're not actually picking up this tire. And now he's threading the axle into the OEM fork. So now it's time to put the caliper on. Just like OEM, lining it back up, making sure everything's good. He's just gonna torque those for now. He's gonna go back later and retorque them again. And uh, now he's just gonna run the lines. Now there's two ways you can run these lines. Um, I actually had him change this after the video. Um, you can run them on the inside. It, it works depending on the tire choice, but I personally like to run them on the outside of the guard when you're running a fat tire just for the sake of if any dirt, rocks, or debris gets on the tire and actually rubs the brake line. I have actually seen them rub the brake line. It's, it's not good. So if you have a wide tire, put it on the outside, not on the inside. So right here, you can see we corrected it. The, the brake line is ran on the outside. It really just depends on tire choice. So anyway, guys, in the next video, we're gonna finish up the rest of the bike. So I'm gonna insert a link right here for you guys. So you can go ahead and click over to the next video. I'll see you there.